Nuclear fusion is a great idea in principle. In principle, it could solve the energy worries of the world beautifully. The problem is that whenever we've tried, getting nuclear fusion to work takes up more energy than it creates. But a team from Japan and the United States just got us a bit closer to our dream of a perfectly clean source of energy. They recently succeeded in controlling nuclear plasma in a stellarator by creating a digital twin. What's a stellarator? What's a digital twin? And what did they actually do? Let's have a look. It used to be that there was basically only one approach to nuclear fusion that was a tokamak. A tokamak is a donut-shaped device in which the hot nuclear fuel is held and heated with magnetic fields until the nuclei start fusing. The existing tokamaks are huge. For example, the one at ITER will be contained in a 70 meters high building. That's about 20 floors. But in the past decade, we have seen a lot of nuclear fusion startups that pursue different ideas. Yes, most of them use tokamaks, but some of them use what's called a stellarator, which is what they used for this new work. A stellarator is still a donut shape, but it has a more complicated magnetic field that allows the device to be smaller and should also make it harder for the plasma to escape, thereby increasing efficiency. The biggest existing one is Wendelstein 7X in Greifswald, Germany. The problem is these stellarators are much more difficult to build than tokamaks, and they're also more difficult to model, so they haven't been studied all that much. Some companies use entirely different approaches. Notably, there's what's called inertial confinement. Inertial confinement basically means you shoot at a fuel pellet in the hope that it blows up and then use the energy. You can shoot at it either with lasers, that's what they do at the National Ignition Facility in the United States, or you can do it with a kind of bullet in what's basically a big gun. That's what they do, for example, at the startup First Light Fusion, where they've called their device Big Friendly Gun. Yes, I can see it smiling, very friendly. And there are a few other startup ideas, such as the Z-Pinch. I covered all of this in a long episode last year. But let's come back to the new paper. The major issue with both standard tokamaks and stellarators is that it's difficult to control the plasma in these devices. The motion is chaotic, which makes it a pain to steer. And if the plasma gets out of control, it can damage the reactor vessel. Because of this, when it looks like the plasma is becoming unstable, the process of heating and fusing must be quickly aborted. This is the biggest problem for making this approach to nuclear fusion energy efficient. But this is an area where computing power can make a big difference through a method that's called chaos control. For example, already in 2019, a group of researchers from Harvard and Princeton trained an artificially intelligent system on data from the joint European Taurus that's currently the largest tokamak in the world and another tokamak that's currently the biggest in the United States. They taught it to recognize data patterns that signal an impending plasma instability. This was a hindsight analysis on data that had previously been collected, but they correctly identified an imminent instability one second ahead in somewhat more than 80% of cases and 30 milliseconds ahead, they saw almost all instabilities coming. You then want to do this in real time. And indeed, this was done last year by researchers from DeepMind. They actively controlled plasma in a tokamak device called TCV, located at the Swiss Plasma Center in Lausanne. It's a fairly small reactor with a size of just about two meters in each direction. In it, the plasma is held by strong magnetic fields that can be manipulated with a number of controllers. To make this work, the people from DeepMind first trained their artificial intelligence on a tokamak simulator that has also been developed by the group in Lausanne. So take the AI, train it to control another software to save time, and then take the trained AI to control the real thing. 
and their AI control of the plasma worked out beautifully. In this movie on the left, you see the measurement of the actual plasma inside the tokamak. On the right, you see the reconstructed shape of the plasma. The Deep Mind people were able to coax the plasma into a large number of different shapes, including a triangular one and two separate droplets. This then brings me to the new paper, which did a similar thing to what the DeepMind people did last year, but with a new method on a different device. This was done by a team of researchers from Japan and the United States at the Large Helical Device in Japan. This is a Stellarator, the second largest in the world after Wendelstein X. They used a new method for controlling fusion plasma by using a digital twin that's a virtual replica of the plasma created on a computer, though I think digital twin is just a buzzword for model. One then uses real-time observations to update the twin and try to predict what happens next to control the plasma in return. The process is called data assimilation and it has more physics built in than the AI-based approach used by DeepMind. In particular, they used what's known as ensemble forecasting, in which you assume some amount of uncertainty for the exact current state of the system and make a prediction for a set of initial values. Then you calculate the most likely one. It's the same method that's also used for making a weather forecast. In this experiment, they control the temperature in the center of the plasma, and you can see here that their control method nicely reached the target they aimed at. However, neither this nor the previous experiment by DeepMind actually controlled an ongoing fusion process. They just steered the plasma without fusion. Clearly, actively controlling the fusion process will be next, and I'll let you know when that happens, so stay tuned. You don't want to miss the world revolution, do you? Many thanks to our sponsors on Patreon, especially those of you in Tier 4 and higher. This channel would not be possible without your help. And you too can help us. Go check out our Patreon page or support us right here on YouTube by clicking on the Join button below. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.